Hi everyone, welcome to our day two training session of learning Oracle Golden Gate Classic Architecture Training. My name is Ashish, Ashish Agarwal, and I'll be delivering this lecture to you. So before commencing the session, just a quick round of update regarding my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Ashish Agarwal underscore GG. So if you haven't visited the channel, I would request you to do visit the channel and do like, share and subscribe the channel. The channel is dedicated to Oracle Golden Gate related videos. Thank you. So in today's session, which is day two, we are going to discuss about Golden Gate architecture, how data flow happens, how to check the certification matrix in Golden Gate. So this is one of the common question which I receive is, is Golden Gate 19C supports this or 21C or any other version supports this database and this platform? So the answer to this question, you should not be asking it to me or anyone. You should be self-dependent to check it. How can you check? We'll be discussing about certification matrix. Then we'll discuss about downloading the Golden Gate binaries. So how you can download Golden Gate binaries. And then if time permits, we'll discuss about install installation part as well. Otherwise we'll move it to the next session. So let us start with the Golden Gate architecture. So in Oracle Golden Gate, so yesterday we discussed about there are two types of architectures in Golden Gate. One is classic architecture and second is microservices architecture. Now, how does Golden Gate architecture works is you have a source database and a target database. So Golden Gate is a product which works with heterogeneous databases. So heterogeneous databases means it doesn't, it, it's, it not only work with Oracle, it works with Oracle databases. It, it works with non-Oracle databases as well, like MySQL, SQL Server, Postgres, DB2 and other databases. Okay, now your source database can be any Oracle or any non-Oracle database. Your target can be any Oracle or any non-Oracle database. Now, each database has its own transaction logs. So these transaction logs in case of Oracle are called as redo logs or backup of redo logs, which are called as archive logs. Okay, so whatever transaction happens in the database, they get written into the transaction logs of the database. Now, Transaction logs of the database contains committed as well as uncommitted transactions. So whatever changes are happening into the source database, they get written into the source database. They get written into the source database transaction logs. Now, once the changes are written, there is Golden Gate capture process. So Golden Gate capture process is also called as extract process. So the Golden Gate capture process reads the transaction logs and captures the committed transaction. So whatever transactions are happening, Golden Gate extract process captures committed transactions. So as I mentioned, it contains both committed as well as uncommitted transactions. So Golden Gate extract process captures only the committed transaction. Now whatever transactions happens, it writes them to the trail file on local machine. So whatever extract process captures, it writes them to the local disk, which are called as trail files. So the trail files which reside on source machine are called as local trail file because they are local to the source database. So the extract process, whatever it captures, it writes it to the trail file on local machine, which are called as local trail file. Now, once the data is available into the local trail file, there is Golden Gate data pump process. Now, this is data pump process is Golden Gate data pump process. So, the work of the data pump process is to, is to pump the data from by upon reading the local trail file, sending it over TCP IP network and writes it to the remote trail file. Now, remember one thing, pump process doesn't send the trail file over the network. Instead, it sends data in the trail file over the TCP IP network. So the extract process captures the data, writes to local trail. So it captures only committed data. So once the transactions are committed, it writes them to the local trail file, which are called as local trail file. Now, once the data is returned into the local trail file, the data pump process reads the data from local trail 
sends it over TCP IP network and writes it to the remote trail file on the target database. So whatever transactions happens on source, it captures those and the data gets returned from local trail to remote trail with help of with the help of data pump process. Now, once the data is returned into the remote trail file, the golden gate replicate process reads the data from local trail, sends, reads the data from the remote trail. So there is a golden gate replicate process. So once the data is available into the remote trail file, okay. So pump process has captured the data from local trail, sent it over TCP IP network, and return it into the remote trail file. Now, once the data is available into the remote trail file, there is a golden gate delivery process, which is also called as the replicate process, which reads the data from the remote trail file and write it to the target database. So one thing, let me tell you, capture process is called as the extract process. So during the training, whenever we are saying capture or extract, it means we are we can use them interchangeably. Same way, the delivery and replicate process, they are also used interchangeably. So basically, when we are saying replicate, it is also means delivery or when we are saying delivery, it is also called as the replicate process. Okay, so there are three processes involved in Golden Gate replication. First is the extract process, which captures the data upon reading the transaction logs of the database, which basically receives, retrieves the changes from the transaction logs. Now, once the data is available into the, once the data is extracted from the transaction log, so as I told you, only the committed transactions, the data from, data gets returned into the local trail by the Golden Gate extract process. Once the data is available into the local trail, Golden Gate data pump process reads the data, Golden Gate data pump process reads the data out of your local trail, sends it over TCP IP network and writes it to the remote trail file. Once the data is available into the, into the remote trail file, the replicate process reads the data out of your remote trail file and writes it to target database. So there are three processes involved in Golden Gate replication, extract, pump and the replicate process. Each, remember one thing here, each process in Golden Gate has a source to read from and a target to write to. What is the source of the extract process? It's the source transaction log. What is the target? Local trail. What is the source of data pump process? It's the local trail file. What is the target of data pump? It's the remote trail file. What is the source of the replicate process? It's the remote trail file. What is the target of the replicate process? It's the target database. So each process in Golden Gate has a source to read from and a target to write to. Now each process in Golden Gate is independent of each other. Extract process can continue to run even if your pump or replicate is down. Pump can continue to run even if your replicate or uh, extract is down. Same applies to the replicate process. Now the thing guys is this Golden Gate architecture is one of the most easiest architecture. But let me tell you, it is one of the most critical part as well. Like whenever you are setting up Golden Gate, troubleshooting Golden Gate, managing Golden Gate, maintaining Golden Gate. So basically whatever you are doing in, in your Golden Gate environment, everything will come from this architecture. So you can manage, maintain, set up, configure Golden Gate through this architecture. So this architecture is really very important. So I again repeat, extract process reads the data from the transaction logs, captures committed transactions. Once the data is returned into the, once the data is captured, it writes them to the trail file on local machine, which are called as local trail file. Once the data is return into the trail files. Golden Gate trail files stores the data in, in their form. So it's not like it's the SQL statement which gets written. No. Each Golden Gate has its own format. The trail file has its own format. So it doesn't write the SQL statement. The format of the 
trail files is binary format and the data gets written in its own format which is readable by golden gate processes so like data pump can read the data from local to write to remote trail same way the replicate process can read the data from remote trail and writes to the target database okay so pump process writes data to remote trail and then the replicate process reads the data from remote trail and apply it to target database now golden gate is golden gate also support bidirectional replication so bidirectional replication means both the sites would be live so whatever transactions are happening from site a they will be replicating to site b now same way in bidirectional the application can be connected to both the sites so whatever transactions are happening on site a they will be replicated to site b in the same way whatever transactions are happening on site b they will be replicated to site a so in bidirectional just like you set up golden gate replication from site a to site b in the same way you will be setting up golden gate replication from site b to site a so now i always say one thing consider bidirectional replication as two way unidirectional so just like you set up site a to site b replication in the same way you configure site b to site a replication so basically now what you will be doing is you whatever transaction like your site b database will have its own transaction logs right so whatever transaction happens those transaction will be returned into the transaction logs of site b database now once the transactions are written into the transaction logs of site b database you will be configuring golden gate extract process on site b once the transactions are return into the transaction log so you will be configuring golden gate extract process which will read the data from the transaction logs of site b database which will write its own data to the local trail file once the data is written into the local trail file the pump process reads the data from local trail on site b and writes it to remote trail on site a once the data is available into the remote trail on site a the replicate process configured on site a will apply the data to site a database so each process in golden gate has a source to read from and a target to write to so in bidirectional environment you will have both the sites as live and the transactions can the replication can happen from one site to another site so as i mentioned consider bidirectional as two way unidirectional with some consideration so what are those considerations we'll be discussing the, those during our bidirectional replication setup but initially when you are new to golden gate consider bidirectional as nothing but two way unidirectional setup okay now this so golden gate architecture is very important that's why i emphasize on this golden gate architecture very much like when i started my my database oracle database learning initially so my first teacher who was there i started my career from uh, oracle database 10c was it 10c or 10i it was 9i and then 10c so i started my career from 10c so my teacher who was there and i really regard her because i learned so much from her she said one thing related to oracle database i'm talking about that if you have learned or understood oracle database architecture you have completed 70 to 80% of oracle database and i really feel that holds true but oracle database architecture is so vast like every day you are going to learn something new but this golden gate architecture is pretty simple and nothing else is involved but still i say if you have learned that architecture properly like you have completed 40 to 50% of golden gate so but the difference between database and golden gate is oh it is 10g not 10c guys yeah it is 10g thanks for correcting sorry for that it's 10g 12c was there 10g and 11g and until 9 it was 9i okay so <laughs> sorry for that okay so same thing applies to this uh, uh, 
database sorry golden gate as well if you have learned this oracle golden gate architecture you have completed 70% of oracle and trust me like your configuration you can do any troubleshooting you can do management everything you can do with oracle golden gate architecture and oracle golden gate architecture is pretty easy not many components are there so let me again run it so you have a source database golden gate extract process will read the transaction logs and in come in uh, sequential manner and capture the committed transactions once the transactions are captured it will write them to the local trail file once the data is available into the local trail file golden gate data pump process will read the data from local trail sends it over tcp ip network and writes it to remote trail file once the data is available into the remote trail file the golden gate replicates will read the data from remote trail and apply it to target database so bidirectional is two way unidirectional so site b will will be considered as source and site a will be considered as target in bidirectional so same way your replication will happen okay now in the previous session we discussed about there are two types of architectures in golden gate one is sorry two types of extract in golden gate can anyone tell me what are the two types of extracts in golden gate not architecture i'm talking about what are the two types of extracts in golden gate classic integrated classic integrated and integrated classic and, and integrated. integrated absolutely correct so there are two types of golden gate extract now what is the difference between the two so the difference between classic and integrated capture is the classic extract basically what happens is golden gate extract process resides outside of the database so in classic extract what happens is the classic extract reads the transaction logs in sequential manner okay now when it reads the sequential manner it can read the data i'm talking about classic extract so it can read the data either from redo logs or archive logs depending on how quickly it is able to read so if it is able to read the transaction from the redo logs and it is able to cope up with it then it's okay it it will directly read from redo logs otherwise it will automatically switch to the archive logs to read the data so golden gate classic extract automatically do the switch it reads the transaction logs either redo logs or archive logs in sequential manner now once it captures so what happens is your transaction logs contains all the data it 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 not only contains the application data it contains your sys data it contains your system data or any other table or sorry on any other schema which is not an application schema right so this this uh transaction logs contains all type of data now consider now golden gate remember one thing captures only application schema transactions it cannot capture your sys system dbns nmsp or any other system related schema objects right now say for example you want to capture the data of two tables dpt11 and emp11 okay now in your transaction logs you have got thousand transactions first related to sys then you have 10000 transactions related to system then again you have 100000 transactions related to sys again after that you have two transactions related to dpt11 after that you again have number of transactions for sys as 10000 again 100000 transactions for system then you have two transactions related to emp1 so what golden gate has to do is it has because these two are application related transactions so it has to capture these two tables transactions first is dpt11 and second is emp1 okay now in case of classic architecture classic extract what happens is it reads the transaction logs in sequential manner so what it is going to do is it will first read this 1000 schema 1000 transactions related to sys 
then it will read this 10,000 transactions related to system. Then it will read 100,000 transactions related to this. After that, it will get these two transactions related to DEPT11. So it will capture those. After again, again after that, it will read these 10,000 transactions, 100,000 transactions, which is of no use. And then again after that, it will capture these two transactions. So the classic extract reads the transaction logs in sequential manner and then it captures. Okay. Now, integrated capture. So, how does integrated capture works? So, remember one thing, Golden Gate only captures application data. It cannot capture your sys system data at all. Okay. Now, integrated extract. How does your integrated extract work? So integrated extract concept is different. The concept of integrated extract is you have a source database which has its own transaction logs. Okay. Now, in case of integrated extract, when you register your integrated extract to the database, you will see the log miner gets built automatically. You may be knowing or you may have worked on log miner as well. Like log, what is the purpose of log miner? It is basically used to mine the redo log files, right? So when you register the Golden Gate integrated extract, automatically the log miner build happens at the database level. Okay. Now, whatever transaction happens in source database, it gets returned to the transaction log. Now the copy of those transaction logs, copy whatever gets returned into the transaction logs, the copy of that, those transactions gets returned into the log miner database. So log miner database is nothing but the copy of your transaction log. Okay. So log miner contains the changes, whatever changes are made to the database, those are returned into the log miner. So log miner basically is a copy of your source transaction log. Now, once the data is returned into the log miner, the log miner passes on the changes to the integrated extract in form of LCR. LCR stands for logical change record. So basically any change record which has happened into the source database, the copy of those changes gets returned into the, gets transferred to the extract process. So log, so basically what happens is, first of all, let me tell you, you don't have to build your log miner separately or you have to do the, do any other step. As soon as you register your extract process and when we implement it, you will see. So as soon as you register your Golden Gate extract process, integrated extract process, at the very same time, the log miner build happens automatically. Now log miner is nothing but copy of the transactions which are there in redo logs and archive logs. Now once your log miner build has happened, now log miner passes on the changes in form of LCR to the extract process. Then once the extract process has received the changes, it writes them to the trail file on local machine, which are called as local trail file. And then those trail files are read by the data pump process. Okay, so log miner. So now in the classic extract, what was happening is, the extract process reads the transactions directly from the source database. However, in case of integrated extract, there is one more layer in between of integrated extract and the transaction logs. There is one more layer in between of log miner. So log miner basically passes on the changes. So here what was happening, the extract process was filtering out the transactions, whatever it is required from the transaction logs. However, in this scenario, in the integrated extract, it is completely different. The log miner passes on the changes, whatever is required by the extract. Okay. 
So what do you think? Performance wise, which process would be faster? Would integrated extract be faster or classic extract be faster? Integrated. Okay. But there is one more layer in between of log minor. So how can integrated be faster? How can the performance of integrated extract be better than the classic one? Anyone else would like to answer this? So my question is, the performance I, I of think because it's not capturing extract would be faster or classic extract would be faster. What do you think? Yes, I. I I also think it's integrated because it's only going to capture the required transactions and not going to read the system system schemas probably. So that's what integrated. So that's what classic extract is also doing, right? Oh, but the classic extract is also going through the system system schema transactions, right? Um, whereas integrated, I believe it's not. Uh, if I'm correct, this, sorry. This log miner is copy of your. Redo okay, so it's not it's not sorting out the transactions related uh -huh. to the application schema. That's why right. it's not doing that. No, no I, I think it's just uh, capturing only committed transactions. So right. your log miner contains your application table, whatever transactions are committed, basically. Okay. So All right. It uh, reads from log miner. Uh, the database is not overloaded. It is not. not it is not reading from uh, uh, directly from uh, read logs, right? So in that case, the database is not overloaded. Okay. So. You answered Naeem, Yoganath, or uh, Shahid, every one of you, and others as well, every one of you answered correctly. But the thing wait, is, but the thing because, is, uh, wait, going because the log miner uh, will transfer the log in the format of SQL format, so that no, it will it will be fast, I think. So. Format doesn't matter, and format is not the case. Log right? is, okay. But the thing here is, you guys said that correctly. So the performance of your integrated extract is almost five times faster than the classic extract. Even though your classic extract is connecting to the database directly and reading the transactions. However, here there is one more layer in between, which is log mind. So the reason being is, see, as, as mentioned correctly, the classic extract is a external process, okay, which resides outside of the database. See, we have to understand one thing. Golden Gate is a product which is not integrated with the database. It resides outside of the database, right? So Golden Gate is a separate product. It is an independent product. So... Mm -hmm. It, so this golden gate extract resides outside of the database and it filter out the transaction one by one. So even if there are this system transaction, it filters them out. However, in this scenario, that filtration is already done by the log miner. So log miner passes on the changes which are done by the, which are required by the extract process. So log miner is internal to the database. Okay, and because all the filtering is already done inside of the database, so it is bound to be quicker and faster as well. So the performance of your integrated extract is faster than the classic extract. So log miner absolutely is correct. Log miner is Oracle internal process. So it does that internally. However, when the filtration is done by the Golden Gate extract process, it, it is outside, it is an outsider to the database, right? So it takes time. Now, let me tell you one thing. Integrated extract it's is a, supported only with anyway, the awesome. integrated extract is supported only with the Oracle databases. So in case of any other database like SQL Server or any other database, there are other type of extract which is and it supports the classic extract basically. So integrated extract is only supported with Oracle database. It is not supported by the other databases. 
Now, internally, if you have to look at this architecture of integrated extract is, the integrated extract internally, there are four processes which runs internally. When you configure basically the integrated extract, there are four processes which runs. So, when integrated extract process connects to the database, it consumes four processes. It creates four processes basically. First is the reader. Reader reads the data. Preparer prepares the data. Builder builds the data and then extract process captures it and then sends it over to the extract process, which then writes to the trail file. So internally, there are four processes which are consumed by one integrated process. So number of processes, say, for example, you have defined as 1000 at the database level and all 1000 are available. Once your integrated extract connects to the database and runs, number of processes decrease by four. So basically it will be 996 process after that. So this makes your integrated extract faster because there are multiple processes which are running, which are making it fast. That's why your, your capturing using integrated extract is much faster than your classic extract. Okay, so there are two types of extracts available in Golden Gate. First is classic extract and second is integrated extract. So class integrated extract is much faster. And another thing is like, uh, if you have multi-tenant architecture, multi-tenant means container pluggable. In that case, only integrated extract is supported. It doesn't support classic extract. And in fact, with Golden Gate 21C, your classic architect, classic extract has been deprecated. So until 19C, even if your database is like non-multi-tenant, you could use classic extract. But in 21C onwards, you cannot use your classic extract at all. Okay. So that log so other minor databases supports classic extract, they don't have log miner because log miner is the concept of Oracle database. Okay, so now integrated extract was introduced in Golden Gate version 11.204. So if your Golden Gate version was less than that, of course, only classic extract is supported. And if your database version is less than 11.203, you cannot configure your integrated extract at all. Okay, so quick question. Sorry, the log miner process. Otherwise, it doesn't exist in the database. Uh, if the if we haven't configured the golden you gate, have to, I guess. you have to build it. You have to build. Okay. It. So you can okay. create a log miner database separately as well. It builds automatically when you register the golden gate ex okay. integrated Thanks. extract process so automatically. So you will see that like. Now you may be getting confused, like means this question comes in the mind that do we have to configure log miner? Do we have to do any separate step? No, you don't have to. As soon as you configure Golden Gate extract process, you will see that log miner build will happen. Got it. And Thanks. automatically all these things will be captured. So once we do practically, like you will see how easy it is. Like you don't have to do any different setup for classic extract or integrated extract. It's just that the name is different. The concept is different. That's why there are two different things. Okay. So now, in the log says, miner, so in the log, log, in the log miner will, uh, will have the three or four stages as you said, a reader, prepare and build and capture. It's the integrated extract. Yeah. So once you yeah. configure the integrated extract, there are four processes which are there. Uh, how come the, it is? How come it, because this is one more layer of so additional uh, load to the GG, right? Uh, how can you say that uh, the integrated capture is uh, five times faster than the classic uh, capture? So that's what I answered for you, right? Because whatever filtration is required to be done, it is done by the log miner, and log miner is internal to the database. However, here you, your extract process was doing an extra, an extract process is external to the database. That's why your extract process, your classic extract performance is 
degraded in comparison to the integrated extract. Okay. So, so, so now, so now the next thing is what we are going to discuss is we are going to discuss about so we have these virtual boxes right now these virtual boxes which are already shared with you they have the oracle database software installed and oracle database is also there okay now the database version what we have in these virtual boxes is 19c okay these are 19c and on these databases we already have multi tenant databases created so multi tenant database means pluggable in container so on gate 1 we have container database name as oggdb1 inside that we have a pluggable database name as pdb1 same way on gate 2 the container database is oggdb2 and the pluggable database is pdb2. Now, I have purposefully named it separately. In fact, Golden Gate can have, the best part with Golden Gate is, you can have same database name, same schema name, same object name. In fact, column names can be same or different. Golden Gate has no issue. So, you can have different or same database name, different or same schema name, different or same object name, different of or same column name golden gate can work without any issue that's the best part with oracle golden gate so i have purposefully defined a separate different names on source and target and different database names along with the schema names so we'll be discussing about that so we'll be doing the replication so because we have source to target so for first we'll start with unidirectional replication so in unidirectional replication gate 1 will act as source and gate 2 will act as target so we'll be capturing the data from the database which is running on gate 1 and we'll be writing it to gate 2 okay now the first thing is before we do anything the first thing what we have to do is we have to download the golden gate binaries okay now the question comes how can we download golden gate binaries from where? Which version should we download now? The question comes, which version should we be downloading the binaries? Right? So for checking that, we need to ensure we check the certification matrix. Okay. Now to check the certification matrix, what are the things which are required? So when we perform the installation of Oracle Golden Gate, Oracle, insta Oracle Golden Gate installation include two parts. Okay. First is downloading the binary. So in downloading the binaries, there are two subtasks. Checking the certification matrix to confirm which version is useful or which version should we be downloading. Second is once we have checked the certification matrix based on that download the software. Once the software has been downloaded, then proceed with installation of Oracle Golden Gate software. Okay. So let us see how do we decide which version we require to download. Okay. So to download the binaries, what we require is we require source database type, version, and platform. Same way we require target database type version and oracle so type means whether it is oracle sql server db2 or any other database version means what is the version of your database and then the platform like operating system that is whether it is windows sun solar H, hp ux or any other platform okay so how so once we have this information so in our case our source and target databases are the platform version everything is same so the source database type is Oracle. The database version is 19. And the platform which we have is, if I do uname hyphen A, sorry, uname hyphen A. So the platform is Enterprise Linux. Okay. Same is on the target GJ2. Okay. 
the gget2 is also the version is 19c database type is oracle and enterprise linux okay now once you have identified your uh, environment details now the next is you need you you need to check the certification matrix now guys i always say one thing whether you are working on any database right so there is a question from shahid golden gate is backward compatible right we can install golden gate 21c or 19c database guys the thing is from now onwards after this session we should not be asking anyone this question whether golden gate 19c supports 12c database or whether golden gate 19c supports 21c database or whether golden gate 21c supports 19c database so we should be self dependent on that to answer that question after this session okay okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to check the certification matrix now certification matrix is very important now that i always say like whether you are working on any technology whether it is golden gate or any technology in this world check the certification matrix first and then proceed to the next then proceed to the download okay because certification matrix will tell you whether that particular software environment is supported in your environment or not. okay so now we'll check the certification matrix of oracle golden gate so to check the certification matrix of golden gate you can go to google and type fusion middleware certification matrix so golden gate is a fusion middleware product okay so check this oracle fusion middleware supported system configuration so when you go to this link you can so okay certification matrix now has been moved to this particular link it says oracle golden gate Oracle Golden Gate for distribution applications. Oracle Golden Gate very data certification metric could be checked from this location. So go to this location. Okay. So this contains Golden Gate certification. It also has pricing and other uh, details as well, like OCI Golden Gate pricing, etc. So if you want to see. Okay. So go to certification. Now here you will find the certification of all the versions, which includes like 11g r1 then very data certification matrix you can find here okay so here on this page you will find certification matrix of 12c 19c 21c as well as 23ai as well now 23ai is the latest version of golden gate which is on microservices remember classic architecture doesn't support uh 23ai means basically classic architecture is deprecated from 23ai so let us check certification matrix of 21. Okay. So the question which is asked is which version should we be using? I always say go with the latest supported version. Okay. So let us check 21C certification matrix. Now when we go to 21C certification matrix. Okay. Here go to Golden Gate. Okay. Now when you go below. So here you can find, first of all, what you can find on this screen is you can find what all, let me move it a bit up. Okay. What you can find is, first of all, you want to find what all databases this particular Golden Gate 21C supports. So you can see. It supports like Postgres, MariaDB, MySQL, Oracle. So all these databases, it supports Teradata, etc. Now, if your database is not listed here, it doesn't mean that it doesn't support your particular database. You need to check the earlier version. So check 19C certification matrix, 18C, 12.3. Okay. So check certification matrix based on that. So in our case, 
our golden gate is on 12c sorry our, our database is on 19c so we'll check here we'll deselect everyone and we'll select oracle database we'll select here oracle database okay now if you see oracle database now we need to check the platform move to the right so golden gate 21c is supported on linux and microsoft for oracle database like uh, windows okay it is not supported like if your uh, platform is sun solaris hp ux so 21c is not supported so it doesn't mean golden gate doesn't support is isn't supported on sun solaris you can check previous version certification matrix as well okay so in our case our operating system is linux right and it is enterprise linux 7 so rhel 7 so this oracle golden gate 21c is supported on linux 9 as well as linux 7 linux 8 rhel 7 rhel 8 as well so verify does it support 19c database yes it supports your 19c database okay and the golden gate version is 21.3 so the minimum version you need to download is 21.3 once you have done that so basically in our case our, our for our platform and everything golden gate 21.3 is supported so we are good with that right so we have identified based on certification metrics it is supported now once you have identified it is supported so the next step is proceed to download the software 21 so how you can download so to download, there are two ways. Either download it from OTN, Oracle Technology Network, or download it from, can anyone tell me what is the other place from where we can download? edelivery.oracle.com Exactly, edelivery.oracle.com. So either download it from OTN or edelivery.oracle.com. So you can go to Golden Gate Download 21C. So when you go below on OT and you will find 23 AI is also there, then you have 21.3. Now this is very important. Okay. Now the binaries of Oracle Golden Gate classic architecture and microservices, they are different because both coexist from 12.3 to 21C, both coexist, right? Now on this OT and you can find your 21c binaries as well. Now remember one thing, the binaries of your binaries differ for each database and each platform. So you can see this is Oracle Golden Gate 21.3 for Oracle on Linux platform. So this is for Oracle database on Linux platform. Then you have Oracle Golden Gate 21.3 microservices on Linux. So the one until 21.3 because both coexist. So until 21.3. The one which says microservices, it means it is microservices binary. The one which doesn't say anything, it means it is classic architecture binary. Okay, so because this is classic architecture training, we'll proceed with downloading this. Now, one more thing, in 23 AI, it, it says Oracle Golden Gate only. Now, 23 AI, only microservices architecture is available. That's why it is. it means it is microservices, just for letting you know. But because in 21C or 19C or 18C or 12.3, classic and microservices both coexist. So one which says only Oracle Golden Gate, it means it is classic architecture. And the one which says Oracle Golden Gate microservices, it is microservices architecture binary. So you will see that binaries are different for each database and each platform. Like this is for Oracle database on Linux platform. This is for Oracle Golden Gate classic architecture for Oracle on Windows. Then this is for DB2 database for I on Linux. Now this is for MySQL compatible database on Linux. So this is for Postgres on Linux. 
So each database and each platform has its own binaries. So ensure that you are selecting the correct binary. Okay. Now, once the binaries are select correctly, once you have identified which binary you have to download, proceed to download it. So in our case, we'll download this Oracle Golden Gate 21.3.0.0.0 for Oracle on Linux x86 60. Click on it, download, accept the terms and condition, click on download. And on the next screen, you can provide your credentials. It will be downloaded and it will be downloaded. Once it is downloaded, you can transfer them on your machine. So on these virtual boxes, which are shared with you, these virtual boxes already has the binary. The binaries are already present. The installation is not done. The binaries are downloaded and they are present on these servers. So the location of binaries slash home slash Oracle slash softwares. Here you can find binaries related to your database as well. Your classic architecture binaries, both 19C, 21C are there. Microservices architecture binaries there and very data 12.2 and 12.4 version. 12.2.2. 1.2 and 12.2.1.4. So this is the latest version. Both version binaries you can find on these virtual boxes under slash home slash Oracle slash software. So initially we will be installing Oracle Golden Gate under like because we'll be installing 21C. So we'll be discussing about this and also we'll be discussing about 19C. Like what is the difference between Golden Gate installation on 12, 21C and the older versions okay so now once the binaries are downloaded and transferred to the server next comes we can proceed with the installation but there are certain considerations related to this what are the installation so now the thing is the binaries are downloaded so can you go ahead directly to install it or are there some steps which you are required to follow there must be some considerations, right? So, for installing Oracle Golden Gate binaries, basically for, so, so download is completed. Now we are moving to the next part, which is installation, right? So, for installing Oracle Golden Gate, there are certain answers you know you you require to know before you can proceed to install oracle golden gate so what are the answers you require so before proceeding with installation you need to define location where you are required to install it because you will need space right so before proceeding with golden gate installation you need to identify the location where you are going to install Oracle Golden Gate. So you can install Golden Gate in either separate mount point like slash U01 or sorry, you can either install it in separate mount point like slash Golden Gate or you can install it in ex any of the existing mount point like slash U01 or slash data, right? So you can pick and choose where you want to install Golden Gate. Either in the existing mount point or you can create a different mount point like slash Golden Gate. So in our case, we have slash data mount point. So we are going to utilize that slash data for the installation purpose. Okay. Now, once you have identified the mount point where you are going to install Golden Gate, the next point you require to consider is how much space you require to do for installation? How much space you need? Because the thing is, if you are installing it in new mount point, then you need to add space. Or if you are going to utilize the existing mount point, so you need to request for additional storage in that particular mount point, right? So you need to know how much space you need to request. So to consider how much space you require for installation, 
first of all understand the requirement and then do research and analysis and design and based on that you can consider the space requirement okay now the next point comes is hardware requirements what are the hardware requirements related to oracle golden gate so the thing is we can just cannot directly go and install right you we need to see when we are doing things being a golden gate consultant or be it, be it any technology consultant it's always our right to do things right and provide the proper analysis and do the correct work right so you just cannot install golden gate first do the setup and then ask for the space you cannot do that right you cannot interfere with the existing running environment as well like say for example under slash data your database is running so initially when slash data got the mount point space it was done on assumption of database only now because you are adding golden gate you need to request additional space in that environment so that the existing environment is not impacted okay so now you need to do hard there are hardware requirements as well to install golden gate so first thing is how much cpus you need to to run golden gate without any issues so number of cores of cpus which are required for golden gate is typically 4 to 8 cores 4 to 8 cores works fine with oracle golden gate the second is we discuss above we need to as add space right now how do we do space requirement or mount point size how do we define or how do we calculate basically right so for space calculation each person has its own steps to do that like when you do it you may be doing it differently when i do it i may be doing it differently but it's not like you are wrong or i am wrong or you are right or i am it just the way of as as because we are assuming how much space it will consume in two or two years or three years or four years down the line so based on that we provide the assumption so what i do is let me tell you what i do to provide the space calculation so a space calculation what i do is i try to identify last 30 or 60 days day wise archive log generation okay so 30 to 60 days day wise archive log generation i try to find so say for example one day it generated 20 gb another day it generated 1 gb some day it generated 100 mb and so on so what i do is i take the average of seven days highest archive log generation so basically say for example in last 60 days i will take out those seven days where the archive log generation was high and then i'll average it out okay to ensure how much space i need okay so when i do average say for example the average of seven highest archive log days generation was 25 gb now we need to keep the golden gate trail files so golden gate what it does is it it captures the data and writes the data to the local trail files now these local trail files consume space on your operating system so we need to define the space right so what we do is and we keep it for 7 days so as a like thumb rule 95% or in fact 97% of places so far in my career they keep the trail files for 7 days so because archive log generation is happening we need to ensure that we have sufficient space so what i do is i take the average of 7 days highest archive log generation and then multiply it by 7 because we are going to keep the archive logs for 7 so say for example 25 into 7 comes out to be 175 gb so what i do is when i request for the archive for the space i multiply this figure what i got by 2 to 5 times because this is the calculation based on today but the database or generation is going to grow in couple of years right so for keeping couple of years in mind i multiply this requirement by 2 to 5 times so what i would require is i would request 350 to 900 gb of space i would go at the higher speed higher number which is 900 gb the reason is you you cannot predict future right if say for example after two within two years the archive log generation is huge and subsequently your 
object sub subsequently or uh, archive log generation is huge which will in which will increase your trail file generation so you have to ensure that you have sufficient space and you cannot do like today you send a request for 175 gb and after six months again you are requesting for additional space there, there will be a question mark on your credibility and work you are doing right so that's why what i do keeping two three years down the line i'll request for two to five times space 350 to 900 gb of space i would request now you may ask one question ashish if we don't require it and we request for this much space like will we be able to justify absolutely you are providing keeping future growth in mind right so keeping future growth in mind you are suggesting that we need this space right and if generally during the initial phase they agree and even if they don't agree the onus doesn't lie on you so say for example after six months the golden gate space requirement is much more than what you are getting then in that case you will be like uh, uh you can you can tell them that yeah you requested for it earlier but you didn't get it that's why you're requesting it for you're requesting for additional space again then the third thing what you have to consider is apart from location and space which os user you should be using to install golden gate that is really very important right now which operating system because we install golden gate on the operating system so which user should we use whether we should use oracle user or any other user like gg admin or golden gate user i'm talking about operating system user right so you need to decide which os user you are going to use to install the oracle golden gate Okay, so to install the Oracle Golden Gate, you can either use the Oracle user or you can use any other user. So generally for this, if Oracle DBAs are managing your Golden Gate environment, in that case, we use Oracle user. So if Oracle DBAs are maintaining the Oracle Golden Gate as well, then you can use Oracle. However, if Golden Gate and DBA re responsibilities are segregated, that means Golden Gate team is different and database team is different. You can use any other user apart from Oracle. Like say, for example, you can use GG user or GG admin user to install Golden Gate and ensure that that particular user you are using, it should be part of operating system o install group okay so it should be part of operating system o install group okay so these are the considerations which are there prior to installing golden gate like where you are going to install it whether it is separate mount point or existing mount point how much space you need and how can you calculate the space how much cpu requirement could be there and which user you are going to use to install golden gate so these are the few considerations you need to keep in mind. Once you have answered to all those, then you are get set. You can do get set go. So basically now you are ready to install Oracle Golden Gate. Okay. So regarding Oracle Golden Gate installation, we'll discuss about Golden Gate installation in the next session. So in the next session, we'll be discussing about downloading sorry installing golden gate 21c as well as difference between golden gate installation in 21c and 19c okay so the next session we are going to do is tomorrow same timing okay so the next session is so the next session is not tomorrow sorry it's next week which is monday as per eastern time because this is weekday batch and weekday batch is conducted Monday to Thursday as per US Eastern time and Tuesday to Friday as per Indian time. Okay, so the next session is next week, same timing, Monday as per US Eastern and Tuesday as per Indian time. So in the next session, we are going to discuss about downloading the Golden Gate binaries and how to do Oracle Golden Gate 21C installation okay we'll also discuss about 
ओरकल गोल्डन गेट इंस्टॉलेशन एंड डिफरेंस बिटवीन गोल्डन गेट इंस्टॉलेशन बिटवीन ट्वेंटी वन सी एंड नाइनटीन सी सो बेसिकली वॉट वॉज द गोल्डन गेट डिफरेंस वॉट वॉज द इंस्टॉलेशन डिफरेंस वेन वी यूज टू इंस्टॉल गोल्डन गेट नाइनटीन सी और लोअर वर्जन एंड देन वील ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट डिसाइडिंग वेयर टू इंस्टॉल ओरकल गोल्डन गेट वॉट आर द डिफरेंट ऑप्शन सो बेसिकली वॉट इज गोल्डन गेट हम एज वेल वील गेट द आइडिया इनिशियली एंड देन लेटर ऑन वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द सेटिंग अप so as of now like the task is still to create the vm for you and good block to i'll i'll mention this in the whatsapp group chat like you can go through this blog as well which is written by me to understand what is supplemental logging so in today's session what we discuss if i have to quickly uh, do the recap so in today's session we discuss about like oracle golden gate architecture how data flow happens so extract process captures the data writes to local trail data pump reads the data from local trail writes uh, it to sends the data over tcp ip network and writes it to remote trail file and then the replicate process reads the data from the remote trail file and apply it to target database so before you proceed with download and installation of golden gate always check the certification matrix after you have checked the certification matrix also what you need to do is you need to uh, there are some installation consideration which you require to consider like space requirement or where you are going to install who is going to install it like which user you are going to install oracle golden okay so the next session we'll do next week. now i'll take all the questions so if you have any question you can ask Uh, yeah. yeah, Ashish. Oh, sorry. So, first, Shahid, you can ask the question. Yeah, Shahid. And guys, you can uh, raise your hand as well. In the meanwhile, yeah, Shahid. Uh, well, thanks for that certification ma matrix thing. I never knew about that. Uh, so that applies to um anything. Like even if we are going to install new database or new version of the database and all those kind of things. Absolutely. Or it's just for the Golden Gate. No, no. Each technology, not only database, each okay. technology in this world has certification matrix in some form for or the other. So all Oracle product have certification matrix. Okay, it's just the Oracle products or any other products. All, well, like... all products have so. All, okay. Some other product name it differently, but mm -hmm. each product has a certification. In Got some it. form okay. or the other. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Gopinath, yeah. you had a question. Yes, as you you said, no log finders is like no. Uh, it's it's only for Oracle. Else, it's, it's it's for all the databases. It's only for Oracle. So log miner is the concept which is available only for Oracle database. In the case, uh, there is no concept called other database for integrated capture, right? No, it's only yes. for Oracle. Exactly. Correct. So integrated extract. Very good point you made, Gopinath. so yeah. integrated extract is only supported for oracle database for other databases it is classic okay and the log mining it, it, it will only capture only the so log mining will have only the complete transaction right yes correct okay it will it, it will fetch the data from the transaction as an oracle and it will uh, only complete transaction in the log mining have it exactly right? correct 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 so how will because in the transaction log uh, if you don't mind like in the transaction we have the committed and uncommitted right how will fetch that record so it is internal using, so it is by using, using so, acm something or like so that is so gopina that concept is internal which is something related to database golden gate has nothing to with nothing to do with that concept if you are interested you can just read about log miner separately so golden gate uses log miner concept log miner is internal to the database i will add one point here actually so your question earlier is the speed right so the integrated pro, uh, capture method follows the parallel processing actually it is not a sequential kind of thing whereas a, a classic capture right it is a single thread data uh, the integrated capture is the multi thread data that is the one of the main reason why integrated capture is so much faster compared to the classic one okay. and second one is that uh, log miner is there right it is actually provided by the api kind of thing it will directly hit the database memory in memory processing kind of thing and directly get the statistics from there whereas the classic uh, capture right if you see that it is reading from the read log file so when you do the file processing right high disk io is there actually 
that is the one more reason uh, where it why it is classic is lower compared to very the... good point you made murli i really appreciate it that is very good point you made regarding that high io so that is very good point you made absolutely thank you very much uh, yeah ashish uh, one question yeah, uh, yeah. this uh, replicate directly writes to database or it goes via the read log and it goes to database it directly writes to the database okay it connects to the database so you will understand like see the major concept you need to consider is your extract process fetches the data from the source database writes to the local trail once the data is returned into the local trail the data pump process reads the data from local trail sends it over tcp ip network and writes it to remote trail and the replicate process applies it directly to the target database this is the only concept which you should be considering right now now more like the when we do the practical internally you will understand more and in a better way as well okay oh. and one more thing ashish uh, this rko log uh, in a, in every environment they have frequent uh, rko log backups right uh -huh. so in case like golden gates uh, needs some rko logs uh, uh, is there some changes we need to do in arm and configuration uh, so, so that it will not move the rko log outside the uh, folder okay so the answer to this question is when you are using integrated extract so i'll be answering that question later on as well but because you have asked it, asked it now i'll give a brief explanation but later on we'll discuss it in detail so the integrated extract what happens is you register it with the database now when you register your integrated extract with the database it cannot be deleted from the system until it has been read by the extract okay now okay. further we'll be discussing on that once we do the setup i don't want to discuss it right now because we haven't moved to that point so far but okay yeah, so you answer to your question is arman will uh, take care of that exactly yes correct okay okay any other question from anyone so guys remember one thing the next session is next week there is no session like tomorrow if the sessions are conducted four days a week monday to thursday as per us eastern time tuesday to friday as per indian time mohammed you yeah. have a question yeah hmm. ashish actually, actually that uh, i asked about that is there any minimum bandwidth requirement like between uh, uh, to source and target because um, you know, the like source will be in one data center target can be in different uh, data center right so do we have any requirement so that data moves faster from so network uh, bandwidth box. has to be good like network bandwidth has to be good so to answer this question like when i submit the requirement there is no network requirement i can give because i'm not an expert on that it's decided by the network team it's just that we have to ensure that the network bandwidth should be good so that the data which is sent over tcp ip network it gets returned on the target side with uh, like with quick okay speed. but uh, but okay by golden gate standards there is no like minimum uh, specifications from oracle side right i never provided so i would say no oh. i never i've never provided oh. Okay. oh i i have one more question if you don't mind if anybody else is asking i can wait yeah shahid you can ask okay so in like in sql server we have a uh, you know publisher distributor and subscriber in this case in in uh, uh, golden gate replication we don't have a middleman right like a distributor we don't need that sorry sorry can you repeat again so in other technologies the replication works uh, for example in sql server there's a publisher and then in the middle there is distributor and then there's a subscriber so these are three separate servers or or three separate uh, you know databases you can say uh, whereas distributor is a it is a middleman basically it's going to it it will take uh, grab the uh, you know transactions and then send it to the push it to the subscriber but in golden gate i believe this is the only concept where it doesn't involve any middle server or no, middle no, database no, nothing, nothing right. is there. okay no 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 okay all right thanks Okay. Okay. So ideally, the publisher is extract only, right? Uh, subscriber is the replicate process. Let us not go to that concept, guys. 
let us consider only on Golden Gate. So Golden Gate contains extract process, pump process, and the replicate process. Okay. Yeah, and that is one more question. To to practice the lab, uh, how much storage we need? Okay, I mean, actually, for the Golden Gate setup. So this these labs for for the virtual boxes which I shared, you need to have yeah, around yes. two fifty to three hundred GB, two hundred to two fifty GB of space on your machine. But in virtual machine, we, 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 we need to set up around 250 GB, right? Yes, so you require on your operating, on your machine, you should have that much space. Okay, you mean to say for each machine or a single machine? Overall, machine, right? overall both of them. Or to around 250, to each. Yes, correct, correct. So how much CPU we need to allocate for that one? You can allocate 4 GB. No, see, I CPU, I see, I'm saying CPU. I'm not sure. I only allocate RAM for this, so 4 GB RAM is okay. Uh, how about C uh, How about CPU process processor? I have never. Needed... So whatever works for you, Gopina. Try different things and see how much is working for you. For me, I have never tried assigning like changing the processes. So by default, anything is okay. okay. So try with different processes. How what works well for you? Fine, fine, fine. Thank you, thank, thank, thanks, thank, thank. Works fine uh, with four processes. Okay, okay. So okay. Let, 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 let me try with it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so guys, ba base memory, I have eight GB. Okay. Good. For each VM. Yeah. Fine. 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 Okay. So guys, next session is next week so let us wrap up our session for today and we'll continue in the next session so thank you very much everyone for joining today's session and we'll continue in the next session thank you